Hi guys, today's video is something I've made because a lot of you have asked me to make it and I'm actually really happy that I've gotten the opportunity to make it because it's something that's really close to me and it's basically on how you can move your dogs to the UK because like you can see, I have two of these. So this is Hazelnut, otherwise known as Hazy, and this is Bobo or Bolt. So basically they're nut and bolt. A lot of people are concerned on how to move their dogs when they're moving to the UK and um, I obviously want to help as many people as possible because how could you better leave them behind, right? So we moved to the UK nine months ago and we moved with both of our dogs and while the process was not necessarily difficult, it's just a little complicated but it's nothing you cannot nail down. So both of our dogs are rescue dogs from Bangalore. We got Bolt six years ago. He was rescued from the streets and taken to a, a veterinary hospital close to us, which is where we found him. And we got Hazel because her owners didn't want her anymore. And funnily, Bolt was the one who selected her <laughs> to be his friend for the rest of their lives. And Bolt was about two and a half years or two years we're not sure when we got him she was about six or eight months when we got her so now we're so used to having them around there i honestly call them my children like bolt and hazel are my eldest two children and i don't think my life would be what it is right now without them when many people move places um moving with their dogs is a bit of a challenge so they tend to leave their dogs behind, which is really sad, both for um, the individuals and their dogs, if you think about it. I mean, it's honestly like being abandoned in the middle of the road with nobody to love you and no one you know and no one you care for. And that's a really, really horrifying experience to go through for anyone, right? As far as you can help it, my request to you is don't abandon your dogs. Take your dogs along with you. It's not that difficult, like I said. But before I move ahead, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, now's the time to do that. Click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon for notifications. I mean, look, this is who you're subscribing to. Now, the first thing you need to do is get your pet microchipped. And it's a really simple process. You can just do it at your local vet or at a nearby veterinary hospital. All they need to do is inject your dog. It's a small little syringe with a, a microchip. And it's fairly painless and it just takes a couple of minutes. And you need to make sure you keep a track of the microchip number. So uh, in our case, we got it done at Cessna, which is in Bangalore, because our local vet was a little busy. And uh, they give you a little sticker with the microchip number, which you can just then put into your pet record. So you have a track of what the number is. And they inserted it just below our dogs, uh, just on the base of their necks. So every time they scan it, the number comes up as well. The microchip needs to be ISO compliant and it has to be a 15 digit microchip. Now only after this is done, after you've gotten your pet microchipped, you need to get their rabies vaccinations done. Uh, if they've just gotten their vaccinations, you can get a booster shot or if it's time for their annual vaccination, in any case, you can get that done. But remember, they have to be microchipped before you get their rabies vaccination or else it's not valid and you'll have to do it again. And after they get their rabies vaccination, your uh, vet will have to scan his microchip. Now, after this is done, your pet needs to be scanned for rabies if you're coming from India because uh, India falls under an unlisted country which has a high threat of rabies. So all of your pets need to be scanned for this. Now, this can be done anytime 30 days after they've received their rabies vaccinations. Something you need to keep in mind is that the blood work, when you take, when you do the set test, you have to send blood work to a, 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 a lab. And there are no approved labs in India. So the blood work has to be sent to a lab, either in the EU or in the UK. And this is something your vet will handle if you tell him you want to get a tighter test done. Uh, just remember that needs to be done 30 days after the rabies shot. Now, if the test results fall within the acceptable limit, your pet can enter the UK anytime after three months of the date from when the blood was withdrawn. If you follow this timeline, your pet will not have to be quarantined in the UK. But if you don't, you will have to quarantine your pet as soon as it comes to the UK and you'll have to pay all of the costs. Another thing you need to remember is that your pet's microchip has to be scanned before the blood sample is taken for testing. What do you do next? Well, next you just simply wait for a really long time. Uh, the blood work sometimes takes 15 days to give you a result, sometimes 10 days, sometimes one, one month. It can be anything, but anyway, you can't travel before three months. 
So you just wait and once your three month period is over, you can travel at any point. Everything up till now can be done by yourself. You don't need any help until this point. But beyond this is where I highly, highly recommend you get an agent. And here's why. Uh, after this, you have to do a lot of paperwork and documentation. And the other thing is that um, the UK does not allow import of dogs into the UK without a UK agent. So you need an agent to liaison with the agent in the UK. So I highly recommend you get an agent at this point in India. And then he or she can guide you through the rest of the process. But I will give you an, uh, like a high level of what it's going to be. So in our case, we used uh, Angel Pet Relocation. And I've added their details below if you'd like to get in touch with them. They were absolutely great. They made sure our dogs got here perfectly. They were very easy to deal with. And they helped, uh, helped us with all of the... Uh, issues and the queries we kept throwing at them very accommodating so for starters you need a health certificate from uh, the Indian government saying your pet is healthy and it's not going to be sold and again your agent can help you with this you also need to sign a declaration which says that you will neither sell your pets once you move to the UK nor will you transfer their ownership to anyone else apart from this if there's any other documentation that's required your agent will share it with you and uh, help you get through all of those processes now there's one more thing uh, anywhere between one to five days before entering the UK, your uh, dog, and this is only for dogs and not for cats, your dog needs to be treated for tapeworm. Until now, all of the processes I've mentioned hold good for cats as well, but this is the only thing which is different for dogs. Your dog needs to be treated for tapeworm, your cat does not. Now, your dog will move to the UK by air, which is by flight basically, and there are a couple of things you should know. Now, your dog can either travel with you which is on the same flight as you or your dog can travel separately after you. There are certain flights which take pets, only certain flights, not all flights take pets. So some of those flights are British Airways, uh, there's Qatar Airways, there is Emirates and there's Air India. There could be more but these are the ones I'm aware of. Uh, how we decided which flight to take was both uh, basis the cost of the flight and the duration of the flight because there were even some flights which were like 23 hours and we really didn't want our dogs to be stuck uh, in transit for 23 hours. Uh, something you should know is that your pet will have to travel as air cargo. Uh, there are very few flights that allow animals in cabin and they usually have to be really small animals and uh, they are allowed in cabin if it's uh, a service dog or a guide dog but if it's your regular pet dog it will not be allowed in cabin so it'll have to go as air cargo. Now for this to happen you need to ensure that your pets have crates. In the case of dogs uh, the crate size will de depend on the size of your dog and if you speak to your agent they will give you a chart on how big a crate needs to be and uh, how uh, much space there needs to be for your dog basis that. All of these crates need to be IATA compliant which means you can't go to Amazon and just buy any crate because it's inexpensive because what's going to happen in that case is if it's not IATA compliant the airline will not allow you to let that crate to get that crate on uh, on the airplane and your pet will not be able to travel. What we did in our case was uh, we asked our agent for help in buying the crate and he found some discounted places from where we could buy it and he helped us with the purchase of the crate. Uh, you can also ask other agents, not necessarily your own, you can ask other agents. A lot of agents just sell crates. Or what you can do is you can look at Facebook Marketplace uh, and check if anybody is selling an IATA compliant crate and check with your agent if the crate is actually compliant or not. Something you should be aware of is what most uh, agents will recommend is for you to get your dog customized or your cat customized to the crate. They're going to be in the crate for a really long time, at least 10 hours, because the, the minimum duration for a flight is 10 hours, 45 minutes. And then apart from that, there's the duration before and after you take them to the, uh, to the airport. So you need to get your dogs accustomed to being in the crate. What we were recommended was when, when we head out or we go out even for like quick dinner or anywhere in the evenings, you put your dogs in the crate, let them get used to it, probably put their favorite blanket in there or their favorite toy in there so that they just get comfortable and used to the fact that they're going to be inside the crate and that they're still safe out there. Something else you need to know when it comes to the airline is that you will have to book slots. Uh, all airlines are allowed a certain number of pets or animals on the flight and if all the slots are booked you have to wait for the next available slot. So if you are planning on traveling soon 
you should start this procedure as soon as you can with your agent to try and book the slots as to when you want to move with your pets. Now there's one more very important uh, piece of documentation that you would need which is a TOR which is basically a transfer of residence. Now a transfer of residence is required when you move anything from India to the UK or from any country to the UK even if you move furniture you need a TOR. If you need pets also in this case you need a TOR. To file for a TOR it's really simple you can just uh, click on the link that I've given you in the description box below and it's on the gov.uk website It's a guided uh, page so it'll help you go through all of the steps But remember that the TOR takes at least 15 days to come So ideally apply much in advance because here's the thing if you fly your pets without a TOR and your pets reach the UK and your TOR number has not uh, and your TOR application is not done through and you haven't gotten your URN number you will have to pay import duty on your pets you can claim it back later, but you will have to pay on the spot or they will not release your pets. Now, one of the biggest concerns we had was whether we move with the pets, we take the pets on the same day as we were flying, or whether we move with them at a later period of time. Uh, and I'm assuming that's a doubt a lot of you have if you're relocating for the first time as well. So here's the thing. You have the option of doing either. But bear in mind that if you're going to travel with your pets, you have to drop them off at the airport at least four to five hours before the flight. And there is a lot of uh, processing work that needs to be done whether your agent will be with you. And once you land in the UK, it takes about six to seven hours for them to be cleared out of customs. Now, if you're traveling with a lot of luggage and with children or with elderly people, it's going to be extremely difficult. So you might want to reconsider it. The other thing is if you're traveling uh, with dogs and you have crates, with, with pets, it's fairly simple. The crate is smaller, but if you're traveling with dogs, the crates can get really big and it's going to be very difficult to move the crates along with all of your luggage and with everything else or you can have your pets traveled on a later date there's no problem with that our pets traveled um one and a half months after we got here so uh in our case uh our pets were staying with a relative of ours in india uh, after we left and somebody they were familiar with and on the day of moving the agent came picked up the pets along with the crates from the house uh, they took them to the airport they finished all the formalities and then the pets landed in the UK and six seven hours were done after they landed in the UK and then we asked for a service for them to get the pets home because again we couldn't move the crates we didn't have transportation to move the crates ourselves so we asked them uh, to help us with that and then they brought the, uh, the dogs home along with their crates that is something I would actually recommend, especially if um, you're moving to the UK and you haven't found accommodation. Because like I've said in my previous videos, it can be very challenging to find a house in the UK uh, that allows pets because most homeowners don't allow pets over here. Now, if you're not going for the service where the agent helps you with transport, what you can do is after your pets land at Heathrow or Gatwick or whichever airport it is, you can um, take them on the buses and the trains and the metros. Most Buses, trains and metros allow dogs and cats. Just check uh, with the bus driver once before you get on. Um, and you can just use the metro or the trains, buses, wherever to get your pets back home and then walk the rest of the journey. Now, how much does it cost? Um, for the two of our dogs, and like I said, we did all the processes ourselves until the tither test. And after the tither test, we took help from uh, the agents. And it was about four and a half lakhs for two dogs with everything combined which was all of the transport from our houses when they took them for the tapeworm test uh, all the processing all the the uh, flight costs all of that and uh, even any of the duties or anything that needed to be paid in the uk and eventually bringing it bringing the dogs home all of that inclusive was about four and a half lakhs and this also included the cost of the crates the cost of moving them uh, eventually depends on which airline you choose because there are some airlines that are more expensive than others. It depends on the size of your pet, like the fatter and the heavier your dog is, the more it's going to cost. And it depends on how many pets you have. Now, once you bring your dog to the UK or your cat to the UK, you should ideally sign them up with a veterinary hospital over here or a veterinary clinic. And it's up to you whether you want to take animal insurance or not. Um, it's not compulsory so it's something you can think about because it tends to get a little pricey over here and that's about it 
fairly simple, right? Not really complicated when it comes to getting your dogs here. So here's the thing. If you have any questions or any doubts in moving your dogs to the UK or your cats to the UK, don't hesitate. Drop me a message in the comments below and I will try and help you out. Thanks for watching and have a great week.